So 343 just released the Season 3 patch notes, and this is an incredibly long list of a lot of stuff that they went over and created and changed and stuff like that. So I want to give you guys the TLDR of what you need to know about this. Now, we've covered a lot about Season 3 previously on the channel here, so if you guys want to catch up with everything happening with Halo, make sure you tap subscribe. As 58% of you are actually not subscribed, so if you guys want to keep up to date with everything happening with Halo, this is the one place you know you can find some Halo content. Now they have the obvious changes of like the new maps and modes and stuff like that. This is all the stuff that's kind of gone under the radar that you might not know about. So like I said, we've covered all this in depth in previous videos right here. So the first thing I want to talk about here is that they've added player collision into the game. Now this is only in custom games, but we could see this transfer over. 343 states that players can now adjust whether friendly players in custom games will be able to collide with one another or pass through each other. This is something I think might, you might see come around when it comes to the ranked playlist, but for social, I would assume we probably will see the current status of no player collision probably staying. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Vite Ramen. Vite Ramen is a small US-based company that provides a far more tasty, fulfilling, and more importantly, healthier option than your typical ramen brand. In less than three minutes, one packet of Vite Ramen gives you more food than the leading ramen brands, 25% of your daily micronutrients, up to 30 grams of protein, 7 grams of dietary fiber, and most importantly to me, 50% less sodium to help you live a healthier lifestyle. Where the leading brand is really just salt and carbs. Vite Ramen also has vegan plant-based versions as well. My favorite is the Sichuan Chili, as it actually packs a punch of heat along with a filling bowl of ramen. I mean, look at me, isn't that the face of satisfaction right there and why give your money to the corporate overlords we can help out a small business so check out the link in the pinned comment and also in the description of this video to give Vite Ramen a look over and thank you very much Vite Ramen for sponsoring this video another change that they didn't mention at all that was coming to season three was the post game crash report I'm sure you guys who've been playing recently have noticed this, that this post game crash report looks a lot different than what we've seen previously with Halo and it looks pretty sweet like I mentioned, basically the changes, especially with the medals right here, showcasing that they're kind of the same tint of color. They kind of showcase the rarity of those medals. And the fun change is that the campaign menu has changed as well, where it shows Chief standing within the cargo bay rather than just kind of just standing there overlooking a field. Now, ray tracing has also been added in the Halo Infinite. We talked about this briefly, but this is the first time we get a chance to see it like in game. And here's a visual of it with it off, and here's a visual with it on. You can see the drastic change in the shadow quality. So this. This is only affecting the sun shadows within the game, currently not available within campaign and only on PC with a capable AMD card or capable Nvidia card. Now this feature will be coming to Xbox Series X later on, but it's not going to be here available within season three, at least at the moment. I would certainly assume we'd see an upgrade to ray tracing some update later on in the future as well as it is a little underwhelming as generally we see a lot of times with ray tracing that the graphics are a huge upgrade with it turned on where it's like, oh my God, I need this. I would definitely want to see ray trace shadows come to campaign especially because generally with ray tracing it takes a lot of resources on your pc and if you're playing multiplayer you want to try to maintain those frame rates and ray tracing really takes a big hit on that so campaign ray tracing please so for ranked only we saw some ammo changes as well within this so for example they showcase a nice little graph here saying that the bulldog has seven round drum to start off with so seven shots but no reserves we're social you still have the seven shots in reserve the shock rifle got its reserve ammo cut in half to 12. The heat wave had its reserve ammo reduced completely to zero. And also the stalker rifle had its shots went, go from 33 total shots down to 17. So some massive cuts there. This should definitely help give players a much more emphasis on trying to effectively use their power weapon setups when they actually get this stuff within ranked. And also provide a little bit more consistency when it comes to gunfights and engagements. We had some visual changes coming in with Halo Infinite as well. One of those being that players will no longer experience extremely bright lighting while playing on the multiplayer maps of Argyle and Detachment. This was a huge thing when Forge first launched. This is more just like a Forge issue in general, or sometimes textures are just incredibly bright for whatever reason. Glad to see that's been fixed within Forge. Also, the damage and explosion visual effects for the Ghost have been improved to now better reflect the vehicle's state at further distances. Now, we also kind of saw this as well within the release trailer of Season 3, showcasing the Ghost being more like on flames and things like that. So, you should have a better visual indication of how much damage 
damage that ghost has actually taken. Next, we have some very important gameplay audio changes will help you kind of flank around to the enemy, if you will. This update right here is saying that to provide flanking players with more confidence that their footsteps are not revealing their location to others, the following adjustments and improvements have been made to traversal sound effects. Reduce the max distance at which players can hear enemy footsteps. The volume of nearby enemy footsteps has been increased. This next one is crucial. Enemy footsteps are now affected by a focus feature. This focus feature will allow for out of sight enemies to have a better chance at flanking players. Enemy footsteps now sound more muffled when obstructed from the player's point of view. Additionally, the volume of obstructed enemy footsteps has been adjusted to better reflect when enemies are at a different height. And saying, for example, like if a player is lower or higher above you, you'll hear that change in audio. So you can have better spatial awareness so you can understand where to prioritize your attention. Again, kind of boring stuff, but incredibly important. New sound effects for obstructed footsteps have been added to provide a more realistic sense of whether enemies are in another room. And lastly, additional surface sound effects have been implemented so that enemy footsteps are less repetitive. So those are all the fixes and changes that came with season three, but wait, don't click off this video quite yet because there are some bugs that were introduced with this update as well. One affecting you console players over on the Series S and X, which is definitely not a good thing to have. Saying for the visual saying, when the targeted frame rate setting is set to 120 frames per second, on Xbox Series S and Series X consoles, the frame rate does not exceed 90. I know if I played on console, I'd be incredibly upset with this change. I hope this gets fixed as soon as possible. Of course, when it does, I'll let you guys know here on the channel. Now, an interesting change has been made to the BTB playlist as well. And it seems like High Power got a little bit of the shaft when it comes to some love right here. As you can see right through this playlist options for Big Team Battle, that what we have here is total control for high power, stockpile for high power, and well, that's it. While we're on the topic of big team battle, a banshee has been added to deadlock and some drastic map changes were made to the map behemoth. As you can see a before and after picture right here, that some geometry was either raised up or lowered to kind of create a little bit of extra cover on the map. You can see, just take a look at the before and after pictures here. And this is some significant changes to this map, which I think is greatly needed, especially for the back ends of these maps where we're so wide open. You can get sniped across the map, essentially. It could possibly make a behemoth much more of a viable map, of course, we'll have to wait and see if that actually happens. But 343 mentioned nothing about this change of like genuine change to the map behemoth where it's like going to play drastically different, the cover completely changed. And for whatever reason, the forge map canvas of Myers has been well completely removed from the game. Also, the map live fire had the bottom mid door changed to showcase an Oni emblem that we saw within the cutscene. But there's a really interesting audio that plays on the map now. And here's a clip of it. This is different from what we know previously. Can I get a close up? It's more kind of just like ominous tones. I'm not really hearing anything like that really goes like, oh my God, that's what that is. Overall spookiness. I mean, this is an Oni door. So weird things are happening. Now, if you want to see some gameplay of the new maps and the new modes, well, check out this video right over here. Thank you much for watching guys. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.